Did you know that our video on the Jakarta-Bandung high-speed railway project in Indonesia is the most viewed on our channel? This video, released in February 2021, has been viewed by over 800,000 people. At that time, the project was about 60% complete. And today, we're here to update you on the project exactly one year after its completion. Let's recall the scope of the project for the moment. The Jakarta-Bandung HSR project involves the construction of a high-speed line connecting Indonesia's capital, Jakarta, with the industrial city of Bandung, spanning a total length of 142 kilometers. The route includes stops at Karawang and Walini, two key emerging residential and tourism hubs in Indonesia. Designed for an operational speed of 350 km per hour, the high-speed line aims to dramatically reduce travel time between these two major cities from over 3 hours to just 40 minutes. One of the most complex aspects of this project was the construction work itself. Approximately 83 km, or 58% of the line, is elevated on viaducts to traverse urban areas and difficult terrain. The project also required the construction of 13 tunnels, totaling 17 km in length. A major feature of the line is the 33-kilometer viaduct passing through the eastern suburbs of Jakarta, making it one of the longest viaducts in the world. The Jakarta-Bandung HSR project is a prime example of how geopolitical rivalry can shape the execution of large infrastructure projects. From the outset, both China and Japan vied for influence in Indonesia. Japan, with its famous Shinkansen technology, initially led the race by conducting feasibility studies and offering financial packages to the Indonesian government for the delivery of the high-speed rail system. However, in a surprising turn of events, China won the contract in 2015 by offering a more attractive deal, a business-to-business -business financing model that required no government guarantees and promised faster completion at a lower cost. Long story short, the Indonesian government's selection of China over Japan was a significant shift. And if you want to know more about this intriguing story, we recommend watching our previous video. China's winning bid included not just the construction of the railway line, but also the provision of rolling stock and the transfer of key technologies to Indonesia. As part of the deal, a joint venture called Kereta Cepat Indonesia-China, or simply KCIC, was formed. This joint venture, comprising Indonesian and Chinese firms, is responsible for the construction, future operations and maintenance of the railway. The Indonesian consortium holds a 60% share, while the Chinese partners control the remaining 40%. China's offer also promised to complete the project in just three years, from 2016 to 2019, with an estimated cost of $5.5 billion, financed mostly through a loan from the China Development Bank. However, after a few initial barriers, construction only started in the middle of 2018, when the completion date was postponed to October 2020. Also, the cost of the project rose to $6 billion, partly due to construction challenges and delays in land acquisition. In reality, the project was completed in October 2023, three years later than the originally planned deadline of October 2020. But delays weren't the only challenge. The final cost escalated to $7.3 billion. Although the Jakarta-Bandung HSR stands as the first high-speed railway that China has built overseas, using its own integrated system of design, engineering, equipment, technology and standards, the escalating costs put additional strain on Indonesia's finances. Rising construction expenses and pandemic-induced delays forced the Indonesian government to step in with an extra $1.3 billion to cover the total cost, raising significant concerns about the project's financial sustainability. This situation isn't unique to Indonesia. Similar financial risks have emerged in other large-scale infrastructure projects financed by China, like the China-Laos Railway. 
Both projects are part of the Belt and Road Initiative and have led to considerable debt due to heavy reliance on Chinese loans. For instance, the China-Laos railway cost an estimated $6 billion, a significant portion of Laos's GDP, exacerbating the country's debt situation. While the loan for building the Jakarta-Bandung HSR represents a smaller share of Indonesia's GDP, the financial burden is still substantial, highlighting the long-term sustainability issues of such expensive projects. Furthermore, with its $7.3 billion price tag, the Jakarta-Bandung railway has become the most expensive infrastructure project under the Belt and Road Initiative, surpassing other major railways like the China-Laos Railway, the Addis Ababa-Djibouti Railway and the Mombasa-Nairobi Railway, each costing between $4 and $6 billion. During the construction phase, the project faced several environmental concerns. One particularly notable incident occurred in October 2019 during the construction of Tunnel No. 11. Blasting methods used at the site caused extended ground cracks, resulting in severe damage to dozens of homes in the surrounding area. Additionally, the improper disposal of excavated soil by workers on nearby streets led to water contamination and compromised drainage systems, increasing the risk of floods and landslides. Beyond the environmental impact, the Jakarta-Bandung HSR project also raised significant social concerns. In Depok village, over a dozen hectares of productive rice fields were converted into disposal sites for excavated soil from the construction. On the logistical front, construction companies faced significant challenges while laying tracks for the HSR line, especially with the use of 50-meter-long rail modules imported from China. These rails were welded into 500-meter sections at the Tegaluar depot, marking the first export of China's high-speed special rails. This method was crucial for ensuring the smooth operation of the railway line by minimizing the number of welding points along the track. Interestingly, Indonesia's state railway company initially doubted the feasibility of this approach, as they had only worked with rails up to 25 meters in length before. To facilitate this complex operation, Chinese companies imported the rails by sea from the port of Qingdao, choosing Chilaka port as the entry point. To handle the imports, they upgraded the port facilities, which were not originally equipped to accommodate the 50-meter rail modules. This transfer of technology and expertise significantly advanced Indonesia's railway construction industry, not just in track laying, but also in tunnel construction. For instance, a specially designed tunnel boring machine with a 13-meter diameter and a 101-meter long cutter was developed for tunnel number one, one of the most challenging sections of the project. To ensure safe train operation at speeds of up to 350 kilometers per hour, Chinese companies deployed the CTCS3 system, a sophisticated train control system based on GSMR wireless communication. This system enables two-way communication between the train and a centralized traffic control center located at Tegaluar. In addition, a comprehensive foreign object protection system has also been implemented. It includes six sensory devices on every overpass, seven sensors to detect earthquake threats up to 25 kilometers away, eight sensors spaced 20 kilometers apart to monitor for rain, and 17 sensors to detect strong winds. When it comes to the high-speed trains themselves, the Chinese firm CRRC Qingdao Sifang took the lead in manufacturing the rolling stock for the Jakarta-Bandung line. These trains are based on the latest Fuxing trains, capable of reaching speeds of up to 420 km per hour, though the planned operational speed is 350 km per hour. During testing, the train even achieved a maximum speed of 385 km per hour, demonstrating its remarkable performance capabilities. The design and shape of these trains are inspired by the Komodo dragon, an iconic animal native to Indonesia, while the interiors feature traditional Indonesian Megamendung batik motifs, adding a cultural touch to the HSR trains. 
These trains come with a variety of classes to cater to different passenger needs, including VIP, first and second class. They also offer dining car facilities, charging ports, facilities for the disabled and ample luggage storage space. By April 2022, the manufacturing of all 11 trains for the project was completed, and the first train was unveiled in August 2022. That same month, Indonesia received both the inaugural train and a comprehensive inspection train. This inspection train is equipped with advanced technology to detect track conditions, measure overhead electricity, and inspect the communication and signaling systems, as well as wheel rail dynamics. It can collect, process, and analyze data on the track's condition in real time, ensuring the high speed line remains in optimal operating condition. As we mentioned earlier, the Jakarta Bandung High Speed Railway was officially put into operation on October 17, 2023. With a maximum operating speed of 350 km per hour, it has become the second fastest commercially operating railway network in the world just behind China. Branded as WUSH, which stands for Fast, Efficient and Reliable, as announced by Indonesian President Joko Widodo, this high-speed rail marks a monumental leap forward in the modernization of Indonesia's transportation. The Jakarta-Bandung HSR has truly transformed travel between the cities. By January 25th, just 100 days after the service began, the railway had already carried a total passenger volume of 1.5 million people. With peak daily occupancy rates reaching an impressive 99.6%, and daily ridership hitting over 21,000 passengers, the impact of this line is clear. The number of bidirectional trains per day has grown significantly, from 14 in October 2023 to 40 today, with up to 48 on weekends to accommodate the growing demand. As with any major infrastructure project, the transition into the operational phase has presented some challenges. These have included electricity blackouts due to reliance on a single transmission source, delays and capacity limitations in feeder train services, and an inefficient refund system. Furthermore, operational issues like signal difficulties in critical sections of the rail line, particularly in areas like industrial forests and tunnels, have necessitated technological solutions such as enhancing Wi-Fi networks to ensure reliability and safety. The feeder trains, which connect HSR stations in Jakarta and Bandung to the city, have a limited seating capacity of 200 passengers, which is quite incompatible with the HSR's capacity of 601 passengers. After more than six months of operations, KCAC has effectively addressed many of these initial challenges. As of September 4, 2024, the Wush High Speed train has served an impressive 5 million passengers within just 11 months of its commercial operations. This accomplishment highlights the project's success and the positive impact it's had on the mobility along the island. For the end of today's video, we need to underline that despite the challenges and controversies, the successful implementation of this high-speed rail system marks a new era for Indonesia's infrastructure development. With the completion of this project, Indonesia has joined the ranks of 20 countries worldwide that have high-speed rail services. This achievement elevates Indonesia's status on the international stage and demonstrates its significant efforts to enhance regional mobility and economic development. If you find this video informative and want to stay updated on the latest developments in railway projects around the world, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to join our membership program for exclusive content and behind-the-scenes access and consider supporting us on Patreon. Your support helps us continue to bring you in-depth coverage of fascinating rail projects from around the globe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.